All right, guys, Taff here again. Um, I moved on from the trike. I'm making a quad now. Um, or I, again, I'm using some uh, electrical conduit pipe and uh, making a four-wheeled uh, quad. And uh, what I've done is I, I, I bent the shape with my frame, of my frame. And um, I, bought, I bought some wheelies. These are the 16 half inch or 42. Uh, CM, I think they call it. They're the big ones. Uh, I threw one of these the other day and it was awesome. That's why I got the, these wheels. It's fantastic. This is my motor on the back. And uh, as you can see, I can lift it straight off like this. That's like, there's my frame I'm building. Um, I've actually made, I've actually made the, uh, adapter there or, or the frame to fit my uh, bottom of my motor in the back of it and it fits straight in. I've got four clips that goes in. I've also got these here. I bought one inch fiberglass rod. It comes in the 10 foot length. It's about 70 bucks I think. I got it online from Granger's. But that's it there. It comes in 10 foot length and I've, I've already mounted those there. And that's that's all going. I went to the scrap scrap yard and I picked up a, a car seat belt that I'm gonna use. I'm gonna get a seat for it, or I might make one yet. This is it. This is just a, for me to get my measurements. And of course, I'm gonna clean it all up after. And right now, I'm welding the steering part of it for the front. That's where I am right now. So I'm doing that, and then uh, put it all together, clean it all up, and see uh, what I need next. My chute is over here. It's a it's a 28 square foot, uh, 28 square meter, and uh, a couple of props. One got dinged up, of course. But uh, other than that, it's 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 looking good, and I should I'll be done today probably. So uh, hopefully it's gonna fly. I'll check it out. Anyway, here's an update of what I got so far. Got the two front wheels done, and I'm drilling. Uh, third wheel so far, and uh, I put a pin through it, it up. That one's done, the wheel's on and I've done the same thing. I cut the little collars and I put a split pin through it, bend it over so the wheel can't come off. If I want to detach the whole wheel from the cog, I can do this. And uh, it's going to be the same on the front. I did the same on the front. You can take a quick look at that. There. Um, I'll zoom in. Did the same thing there. I drilled those. And uh, that's done. And that's the other one over there. Okay, so I've got one more to do. And then I'm gonna look at the seat belt and a seat. So that's the next part of all this. And I'll update you on that. But all this stuff I, uh, I got from the local hardware store, uh, except for the fiberglass one inch and the wheels. Okay, um, if this actually does good and I can fly it, I'm gonna get some uh, uh, chrome molly pipe and I'll redo it all again in the, in the proper material and see how it goes but it's gonna fly awesome I know all right now finish the wheels uh, the wheels are all on I've got my cut pins in, split pins in and ready to go next thing you're gonna do is I'm gonna go, uh, just put this on the back like I said um, this little compartment thing I made there, uh, it fits, fits in really good. And I just put it in, four bolts and some velcro, and it's really good. There you go. Good to go. Just bring it all where I want it. And that's it. Alright, the next part I'm going to work on, I think. Oh, let me say it again. Another piece in here, a little piece in there. 
arm. Then I go for a seat in the back. I'm not going to use this, I'm going to make a new seat for it, but this is my harness that uh, came with the wing, and uh, I'm just going to check it out. But I think I'm just going to make a new seat, because uh, I want independence from these, I want to come up and up from here, you know, that's what, that's what I like about it. But, uh, this idea, I thought I'd see what it looks like. I know I know what it looks like, I'm not going to go with this. So, um, I have my seat belts here to the frame, so I'm independent, you know. And, uh, I like that feel because the last time I was flying, that's how it was. So, I just have a seat belt here, strapped into the frame, and controlling the flying is wonderful. You know, not, not with this, I just too restriction, too restrictive for me, so anyway, that's that's just a thought. So it's done. This is the uh Second trike uh, quad I'm making, uh, so it's going to be for Tommy. But the uh, thing is, if this turns out better than the first one, this is going to be mine. I'll give my old one to Tommy. That's an excellent one too. But hey, <laughs> I'm doing the work. But uh, no, it's serious, guys. Uh, this is a homemade uh, quad I put it together. I'm going to fit my Snap 100 onto it, and I have a um, Paratoy Wing 28 to go on it. Um, I've flown one of these, incredible. I really like them. So I come up with my own design and uh, I've got the 16 inch wheels on it. And uh, you know, it takes me a day or two to make one. And uh, it's great. I haven't tried foot flying yet, but I'd like to. Uh, however, I got into uh, wheels and I love wheels. This is the way we're going. All right. Uh, this is the second quad I'm making. I made the first one out there. Uh, we haven't had a chance to fly it yet because the weather's been so windy for over the next few days. I think uh, we're going to have a good opportunity to, to actually fly. I've got a 16 inch wheelies on it. Uh, on this one, I'm probably going to put the smaller ones. And we can change anyway, you know. I made it so we can slip. Um, my Snap 100 or the Sky Cruiser frame will fit into this. Beautiful, I'll show you that shortly. So it's it's like two minutes, put it in, put the pins in, Velcro, Velcro, done, good, good to fly. Um, I make this one slightly different, a little bit wider than the first one. And this is going to be for Tommy, but uh, if this is better than the first one, then this will be mine, Tommy will get the first one. Again, the Sky Cruiser. 
둘셋 steering part of it and then after that I'll put the seats on or seat and uh, just go over everything make sure everything is looking good all welded up frame is secure Th this part that doesn't actually carry it, carry it okay all the, all the stress is going to be on the bottom here so when the straps come up it's lifting everything up okay and uh, this is a uh, uh, really light you know so um, but once the seat is on the steering um, I'll, I'll get back to you and show you again easy to make it really is if anybody wants any just give me a call Now is uh, get it balanced. Put some marks down, and uh, we'll set the top with the rings are going to go. So hopefully, once they do this, we should be balanced and do the job. We'll see what happens. on these are the a assists and uh, checking everything out and taking it flying let's go flying Oops. 
Alright, once it's cool down, um, I'll give it a final balance. Just tidy it up. And then, uh, I'm ready to go fly and check it out. So, anyway, it took me about a day to do this. Uh, it's you know it's not painted or anything yet obviously but I just finished fabricating it. I want to see how it flies and uh, then I'll make a decision if I want to make some more. So anyway, that's how I did it. Uh, these wheels uh, from Wheelies are phenomenal. These are the 16-inch ones. Um, they are just out of this world really good wheels and on the back uh, I have a five glass one inch axle okay and that goes into a, a one inch ID pipe so it fits really well and uh, anyway that's it I'm just gonna balance it again and hopefully I can go flying perhaps even yet today right All right, so I welded my uh, bracket in to take the uh, Sky Cruiser, and um, just making sure everything's lined up correctly. And there, there it is, right there. So that's that part done. I just got its just all tacked up right now. I've left uh, these uh, low bars here loose for now because I'm going to put a um, strap. For the for the kite to actually the glider to actually attach to okay guys uh i'm welding attempting to weld uh the six inch pipe with a uh, tig and um, i'm going to be welding in the uh, 6g position which is 45 degrees angle okay it's considered one of the most difficult welds to do if you can do it yeah, you're gonna get a good job so um, I haven't done much TIG and I certainly um, need to to learn to do 6G uh, 5G horizontal vertical no problem at all you know I've got one year I did and it turned out you know pretty good for a, a stick welder <laughs> and uh, it, it's, it's pretty good I marked there so I need to put another cap over there but typically what I've been told is with a 6G you put your root uh, here I'm using a 332nd rod uh, and I've made little L shapes if you like which are easy and I ground up one side if you go to a site called um, uh, welders I think it's called welders tips and tricks dot com okay guy Jody on there awesome He's got all sorts of welding uh, tips and tricks on there. Weldingtips.com, um, Jody, excellent. And I picked this trick up from him. So I'm gonna attempt to uh, do this. One of the things, the other things I found with TIG is you gotta be very, very clean, okay? It's not like stick welding or MIG or flux core. It, it's totally different and uh, it's, it's uh, you know, if you have a gas well, it, to me it's similar to that. I've done gas welding years ago and I'm trying to get back into welding. I've been out of the game for a lot years and years, 20 odd years. And uh, I'm trying to do, get myself set up back into TIG again. Uh, not that I've done much, but what I have done, you know, I did pretty good. And um, the way to go to get a good job is 6G. So I'm gonna tack this up and then uh, we'll see what happens from there, okay? Thanks for watching.
Hey guys, this is that site I was on about weldingtipsandtricks.com. Um, I ordered a couple of these TIG fingers Jody sells and uh, I've tried them out and I think it's going to be uh, really good to for this project. So anyway, that's what you're looking at there. Welders trips uh, welders tipsandtricks.com. Anyway, let's get back to welding you. Thanks. All right, before I start uh, I, I bought one of these uh, Eastwood TIG 200 uh, welding machines online. Uh, it's, it's about 800 plus bucks. And um, I thought I'd give it a try out, you know. It's got a oil and gas. This thing is amazing. This is amazing stuff. Uh, I, I can't believe how lucky I am. Um, it welds 40 and 80 schedule. It's, it's rated up to 3 16 but god i can put wells down no problem at all it's it's fantastic over here i've got a, a miller um sink away 250 and uh the funny thing is um i wanted to get back into tig welding i didn't have a tig welder so i'm looking around and lo and behold a friend of mine had one i could borrow and i'd already ordered the eastwood um so i here it is sitting here it's it's, it's it's a good machine too, I mean, it's phenomenal. It's a real heavy duty industrial. Um, I fired it up, it works fine, but I, I'm, I'm staying with the, uh, this one here, Eastwood TIG 200. It is excellent. I mean, the quality is phenomenal. Really simple to use. I'm not promoting it, I'm just telling you what it does for me. It does an awesome job. I, I just use the uh, figure control, finger control. Uh, for stop and start it, it's it's amazing man really is good i'd recommend that but i'm not promoting it i'm just saying okay let's do the tacking up thanks okay so um i, I set my power at about 80 85 amps and uh, before i tap here i'm gonna just run a little bead here make sure it's hot enough um, I don't want to use too much power. I need to get a good penetration inside. So I need to fill that 332 gap. Uh, and again, it's, it's, it's tape, so I put a number six cap on, or cup. I've got a, this is actually a, an eighth uh, tungsten in there. Eighth, 332nd works good too, but it's all I have right now, so I'm gonna use it. So I'm gonna get a tap going. And again, what I, what I hear from, from the welding guys, you need to put four tacks on. 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 9 o'clock, okay? That's what the inspectors like to see. Let's do this a go. Okay, it seems like that was pretty good. Melted the filler rod, right? I keep it tight on. See what happens. Here we go. Sort of like a layaway technique, or not there. So deep. My uh, tax. You need to look at those now. Okay, there's my there's my tax. Okay, one, two, three, and four. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the uh, spaces here. And uh, again, this is a tip from Weldon Tricks Tips dot com. Uh, Jody suggested grinding a little flat on the one side, which uh, which I did, and it really does come out easier. So thanks for that. Uh, anyway, so th that's where I'm at right now. Okay. Okay. 
um, I've set up the pipe, 6 inch pipe, in the uh, 6G position. Um, and uh, I, one of the things you need to be able to do is to have a dry run, okay, and see how you're going to do this. You know, I'm right handed, so I, I would start about right here and my wire and bring it round. I tied in there. Okay, so I cleaned up a bit. I think we can take a look. It's not bad, but to be honest, that wouldn't pass a test, okay? Uh, I just need to practice like anybody else. I have to practice a lot. Uh, again, it wouldn't pass right now because uh, penetration is great in one spot and it's not too good in one or two other places. And I think you've got to be constantly uh, aware that you put a good bead in there. And with a good bead, you're going to get good penetration and everything's going to be tied in together. Right now I'm just concentrating on at least making the outside look good. That won't pass the test though. They look good. It's the inside that really counts, but hey, okay, you know, this is how we learn by practice. 